of those knockouts where you knock someone out and you walk away completely devoid of emotion, that's cold. And that, that was a bad man we were looking at there in Anthony Joshua. Pro Boxing fans here in Birmingham, Birmingham, uh, for the Magnificent Seven Ride Again card. Um, Jeff Sony, how are you, sir? How's things? I'm good. Um, had a good, fun press conference. I mean, it was a bit long because there were so many, because there's so many great fights. I mean, that's that's why you're going to get long presses, but I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. Um, all the better for seeing yourself. Um, let's talk about this card, which is, like you said, stacked. Nathan Heaney, first of all, headlining this show. A lot of people still are saying, listen, this guy's a good ticket seller. Can he fight? We saw what he did against Denzel Bentley, and we show he showed us that he can fight. But um, to answer them questions, or what would you say in, re in, regards to, in regards to what Nathan Heaney can do on Saturday night with 2,000 fans behind him in Birmingham? Um, firstly, like the atmosphere is going to be electric. Like, I think he's probably got the best ring walk in boxing. If not, it's right up there. But uh, with 2,000 of his own fans there, you know, and, and the rest of the fans in the arena, it, it will be better than ever. I can't wait. Um, with regards to his critics, it doesn't really matter. He's 18 and 0. He's got a win over Denzel Bentley on his record. If he goes on to now beat Brad Pauls. His resume is actually turns into a pretty good one. Uh, it's a good one already, but when you start Jack Flatley, Denzel Bentley, Brad Pauls, these are some of the best middleweights, certainly in the country around. Denzel Bentley was very much world level uh, when Nathan Heaney beat him. So 18 and 0, could be 19 and 0 on Saturday. And look, he's looking the part right now, isn't he? I mean, he's just, he's just coming up with the goods every time. 2,000 tickets he sold himself, 450 deliveries. He's, he's looking like a young Tom Selleck with the tash as well, which is a tribute to his dad, by the way. Um, I, th I think it just must be a great time to be Nathan Heaney. We've got a real star here in British boxing. Um, obviously, Brad Paul talks about being the first uh, in a while to be a British champion. I think it's the second guy from uh, the, the Cornish area to be, become a British. That sure? That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got to take it. I've got to take it as gospel, to be honest. Yeah. But that just pro that does provide a challenge for him. He needs to show that. Listen, the guy's not here just to take part. He's here to actually win that belt. The, the thing that I said when the fight was made. If Nathan Heaney had not beaten Denzel Bentley and this fight was made, I think Brad Pauls would be the favourite. He's the English champion. Nathan Heaney hasn't won an English title, right? He's, he's gone above it. But if this fight was made a little while ago, you'd probably make Brad Pauls the favourite. He's only lost to, um, you know, to Tyler Denny in, in, a, in a good fight. So uh, it's a very, very tough fight. And he wants to make history for Cornwall. Look, we've got Stoke versus Cornwall. It's, it's the derby we never knew we needed. And um, it's, it's quite amusing because... He does just sort of sound like Nathan Heaney did before he fought Denzel Bentley. He's talked about how that's his dream belt. He's been dreaming about the moment where he hears and the new, making history for where he's from, all, all of that kind of stuff. It's quite spooky, really, that it just kind of sounds like Nathan Heaney. But let's see. I, it's, it's really one. I, I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, I can't wait to find out. I do want to talk about the return of the juggernaut, Joe Joyce. I spoke to um, Richard Towers, the trainer, of Cash Ali, who's who we all know, he's been around a long time, been in sparring camps with all these big, big heavyweights, are world, uh, world champions now. I asked him, listen, Joe put out a poster against Joe, uh, saying that he wants Jose Parker. Do you feel like he's sort of overlooking your mind? He said, maybe he is. Maybe that's that's going to be the case with Joe. Do you feel like it was just a case of him fighting a boogeyman in Zhang? And after this win, maybe he can carry on some momentum that he had previous to that, or? Are we seeing a decline in Joe Joyce? This is the fight where we find out because he's only lost to one style, right? As a professional, he lost to a guy who was southpaw, who was bigger, who was heavier and could bang. Now, Cash Ali isn't bigger. He isn't heavier. I'm sure he can bang a little bit. He's not a southpaw. If he struggles with Cash Ali and can't juggernaut him like he'd been juggernauting everyone else, then yeah, you would have to point to a decline in Joe Joyce. I guess we find out all the answers on Saturday, but big fights are out there for him. If he does come through this, he put up the poster with Joe Parker. Joe Parker has gone on record many times saying he wants to avenge defeats to anyone that's beaten him. 
So he wants to he wants that get back with Anthony Joshua. He wants that get back with Dillian White. He wants that get back with Joe Joyce. And Joe Joyce is the only man to knock him out, the only man to stop him. A win that looks better and better every time Joe Parker gets in the ring and you know, beats Gilles Zhang, beats Deontay Wilder. It's a, it's a great, great win. Hopefully we see that down the line. But if Joe Joyce can't do a job on Cash Ali or if he like, looks bad, uh, it's not great news. Interesting. Do you want to sort of uh, quickly talk about a few of the fighters on this card? Um, Liam Davis in a, in a in a fight that people are saying, listen, he's fight uh, in a way his opponent, uh, a sparring partner, but we know his opponent is very, very. He's a serious opponent. Let's not just sort of put that that tag on him, but he, he's, a, he's in a tough fight on on yeah, Saturday. Right? I, I think I put that tag on him yeah, at the press. I was trying to allude to that. Yeah, in, in a sparring partner. I just thought, let's <laughs> keyword in a I just thought we'd use that a little bit. Um, it's a hard fight. It should be a hard fight. This guy calls himself El Terrible. The last El Terrible from Mexico I knew was Eric Morales, and he was a hell of a fighter, one of my favourite fighters ever. If this guy is half as good as El Terrible, Eric Morales, Liam Davis has got a hard, hard night on Saturday. He um, beat Lee McGregor, and that was a bit of a statement. He took Lee McGregor's unbeaten record, came away from home to do so. He'll fancy himself to do the job again. Um, I saw him lying down outside, by the way, just like, so I don't know if that, that, that's a, a kind of he's tired or it's weight related. I, I don't know. But like out there, all of his team was sat down on chairs. There were plenty of seats available. He was just lying down on the floor. So um, well, was it, did it look like a normal set? Like he was just lying down. They were sitting there. Were they panicking? It was all pretty normal. He seemed pretty relaxed. It's just there were chairs available. I just don't know why he was lying on the floor. So I don't know if that means anything in the grand scheme of things, but we will find out on Saturday. It's um, Lim Davis is really good, by the way. We, we need to get behind him. If he, if he beats this guy, then uh, like he's, he's an IBO world champion. He's won the European title. He's, he's the European champion. He's won the British title as well. He's kind of won it all. He's a, he's a hell of a fighter, and he's got that... He's just got that spirit. He's come from nothing, right? He's come from the gutter. He talks about it. And now he's just trying to change his life and he's doing a very good job so far. Dennis McCann, uh, new hair, new teeth. It's all happening with the, with the new suit. But look, I spoke to him. I, I did uh, an interview with him and I said, listen, do you want to get in on that Riyadh money? You know, that, that Saudi money? He said, yeah, listen, it can possibly happen. We don't know. It could happen next. A fight that comes to mind is a fight with Shabazz Masood, who's doing my troop. Saying that, obviously, he's got a tough fight in Brad Strand on Saturday night. Uh, Brad is looking to sort of upset, but as people who are not managers, we can talk about boxing outside this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that fight with Shabazz Masood, providing he wins on Saturday night, is a, is a great, entertaining fight for, for one of them fights on the 5v5. I mean, it is. Look, we don't know the weights yet or anything like that, but it, it is, of course, Dennis McCann against Shabazz Masood, but... Brad Strand might be better than Shabazz Masood. Brad Strand's really, really good. So we're, we're going to learn a lot more about Brad Strand on uh, on Saturday. Brad Strand has two amateur wins over Liam Davis, who's about to, you know, touch wood, become IBO world champion. So I wouldn't overlook Brad Strand and be like, oh, hopefully he can fight Shabazz Masood because Brad Strand's from a very good gym. He's with Nick Ball every day, Andrew Kane, the the McGrails, you know, Bomber Browns in there. They are they were a very tight knit good good gym and he's got a lot of backing and he believes 100% that he's going to win he's fancied this fight for a little while so uh, I think any talks of Dennis McCann against other super bantamweights right now very very premature because this is for me probably along with Baluta this is the test so far in Dennis's career Fair play. I do want to move uh, on and talk about the man of the hour, Anthony Joshua. We, we were both there, saw so what happened on last Saturday night. Uh, just a brutal demolition job of Francis Ngannou. We see the clips online and they just keep getting yeah. more brutal every time you see the knockout. I want to ask you though, uh, I've always uh, asked people in regards to Anthony Joshua, now he's in a happy place. He seems like a dangerous, he's a, a happy fighter, is a dangerous fighter and he seems like he has got that danger. I want to ask you now he's found this happiness with Ben Davison and that team. That does the fights with the top boys, and I'm going to talk about Tyson and Usyk and the rematch with Usyk or any of them top boys, a lot closer than it was maybe 18 months ago. I think there's there's clearly a growing belief around him, and that that knockout at the weekend it was crisp, it was calculated, and it was cold. It, one of those knockouts where you knock someone out and you walk away completely devoid of emotion. That's cold, and that that was a bad man we were looking at there in Anthony Joshua. He's a guy who believes in himself, a guy who's pulling the trigger against a, a heavy puncher in Francis Ngannou. 
He's pulling the trigger. He's got people around him in Ben Davison who are telling him all the right things. Seems to have found a connection. Seems to completely know who he is right now. And something quite interesting was after the fight, he didn't get hyped up about, you know, knocking out and gone. He wasn't interested in trying to talk to Tyson Fury, be like, oh, look, I did that and you didn't. He wasn't interested in any of that. He was just like, right, so like, who am I going to fight next? Who am I going to be obsessing over now? He, he seems to be in a in a very good place, which for the heavyweight division is great news, but also there, there's no reason why he won't fancy his chances, as he always has, against Fury and against Usyk in the, in the third fight. Ben Davison has talked about how he wants to help AJ correct the mistakes against Usyk and, uh, and win that fight, if that, if that comes off. Uh, and that's if Usyk beats Fury. Fury beats Usyk, you know, I mean, that's just just the ultimate fight isn't it it's like uh, it's like judgment day it's the ultimate summit meeting of Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua hopefully we see that but he has re-established himself as very much a player from the top table of heavyweight boxing and uh, we should all be quite happy about that whilst everyone's friendly on friendly terms match room and Queens where everybody's sort of uh, hugging and shake hands and everything else it's good to see a rivalry because when Tyson Fury was asked after the fight about uh, sorry, Anthony Joshua was asked about Tyson Fury after the fight. He said, I don't give an F about Tyson Fury. He's disrespected me, called me a, a, a proper sausage or something. But as much as everything's nice in Riyadh and in Saudi Arabia, we need to still see the fire in the bellies of both fights just to like, ignite the crowd, get the crowd interested. Yeah, yeah. For a long time, a lot of people thought this fight would happen. They seemed a bit disinterested. It seems like everybody's interest is back on that fight. Whilst he's got a very dangerous fight against Usyk, Tyson Fury that is, how much as boxing fans, me and you, want to see that fight as a penultimate fight? I, I really want to see it. Look, Tyson Fury's future is undisputed against Alexander Usyk, right? But there is no doubt that everyone wants to see him fight Anthony Joshua at one point. So if Tyson Fury, say he beats Usyk twice, say in that time Anthony Joshua beats, I don't know, Hergovic or Parker or something like that, that just builds it up more and more and more and then it's as I say it's that summit meeting and we talk about how the uh, you know we still need that needle that's there between the fighters the promoters are the ones who are getting on now like, and, and I think that's yeah, okay that helps that helps move the sport forward that's a that's a good thing the fighters still have that needle I I, uh, I enjoyed AJ's response about oh well Tyson Fury was clapping and all that and him just saying I don't give an F yeah. that's good that keeps keeps that bubbling away and uh, yeah he, he's a player um, in regards to Tyson, we saw him um, in Riyadh, looked very lean, looked, looked in good shape to be honest, um, was doing a bit of punditry for, for the zone, but how important is it, May the 18th, that whilst we've not seen the best of Tyson in the last couple of fights, that we get to see the best Tyson and more against a very, very good Alexander Usyk? He looks in shape, right? So that's great news. Tyson Fury looking in shape um, could be bad news for Alexander Usyk. Usyk's always in shape, so it's it's great to see, and uh, we're getting closer and closer to that fight. May 18th, it's going to come around very, very quickly. I, I can't wait to, to see the fighters get around each other, and um, a big moment in Tyson Fury's career. He's, he's been telling us that he's the greatest heavyweight of this era. He told Usyk that the guys that he's beaten are bums, and that he's never faced a king before, and things like that. It's time now to back it up, and... Uh, Traditionally, after traditionally, but what normally happens is after Tyson Fury's had a, an off night, he tends to have very much an on night afterwards. If he has an on night against Alexander Usyk, he walks away with a hell of a lot of belts and finally maybe starts getting the credit from people. Although there'll still be still be people slagging him off. That's that's boxing, but um, could be a big moment. Him stood there with all the belts. Uh, the last one, Alexander Usyk. Though we, we talk about AJ and Fury, but. Alexander Usyk, I don't think a lot of people should be looking past this guy. What he's done in the cruiserweight, undisputed there, cleaned out some very, very good opposition there. Fighting somebody like Tyson Fury, I'm sure as box fans, as, as much as you want to see Joshua and Fury because we're from the UK and everything else and world boxing, Usyk's going to be there to spoil the party. Usyk is a serious, serious guy. He's, he's got all of that undisputed at cruiserweight, uh, unified at heavyweight and, uh, and one belt away from becoming undisputed at heavyweight. People were talking about how Joshua beating Ngannou was a, a big kind of, you know, F you to Tyson. It's a much bigger statement if Fury beats Usyk, who's beaten Joshua twice. That is the statement to make. So if he can make that statement against a fighter like Alex Alexander Usyk, it's, uh, it's pretty big time.
Cool. Deb, uh, always a pleasure to talk to yourself. I know you've just come off air with Queensbury and everything else. Um, no doubt I'll see you over the next couple of days, but thank you very much for talking to Pro Boxing fans. Thank you for, uh, for the interview. Nice That's to speak to you. That's man.